The Way of Winter update is finally here. 1.3 delivers a ton of new content to Wazuman, including a brand new scenario and map. They come with a fresh new weather system, unique survival mechanics, more crafting, weapon and armor blueprints, new silo strongholds, and so much more. You can already hear it, there is a whole lot to talk about. So guys, welcome back to a new Was Human Guide, in which I'm going to share everything you want to know about this new chili scenario. From gaining instant access to it, regardless of your current progression, and the most important eternal and transfers, to essential tips and tricks to not just survive, but thrive in the new winter scenario. We're going to check out the new blueprints, phases, rewards, and so much more. So let's get down to business. A quick reminder, I had access to a preview build of this scenario. I checked out the new silos as well as the strongholds. A link to these videos can be found in the top right of the screen. All right, so first off, for returning players, this will be valuable information for you if you don't want to miss out on bonus rewards and also instantly transfer your main character to the new scenario. What you want to do is log in before you make the transfer. You want to check out your mailbox, pick up all the rewards you can find right there because these can also be transferred to the new phase, which you don't want to miss out on, especially if these come with, for example, star crumb rewards and other types of consumables. Also, very important, press escape and check out the rewards for the current phase you're in. Claim every single one of them right here. Also, if the season goals tab, I didn't do a lot of progression on this specific server, but still, if you claim every single one right here, you're going to get a ton of those Mitsuko marks and also Star Crumb. After you're done with that, it's time to make the transfer. We're going to hop to the new Way of Winter scenario. If you press escape and click on your current scenario, you can go to season info, and this is where you will find the forced script exit. This is going to cost a specific token you can purchase from the season shop, the scenario exit card, which only costs one Mitsuko's mark. After you've bought it, can only be done once by the way, you can instantly force quit the server and check out another one. In general, I recommend you to do this as quick as possible or simply join a fresh server to enjoy all the phases and get the most out of it. You can also synchronize the timing with your friends to make joining the same server a little bit easier. Invitation codes can help your buddies to get there a little bit easier. Don't rely too much on this though, because I wasn't even able to join a server with a couple friends hours after it was created. This is something you want to remember for all future scenarios as well. Hop on Discord or whatever, call with your friends and synchronize the transfer. All right, so now that we've made it into the new Way of Winter scenario, we get introduced to it with a little cutscene, and after that, it is time to choose our starting point. There are two different zones you can start in, the Vena Fjord as well as the Annex Tundra. These both come with three different drop zones. Personally, I recommend you to go for the Vena Fjord Wheelbone. There are different reasons why I suggest you to take this quick travel, because first off, for the quest, you're going to have to visit it multiple times in your early stages to make progression. So if you instantly unlock the quick travel to it, it's going to make everything so much easier. It's also central in the world, which makes exploration or travel in general a whole lot more convenient from the get-go without vehicles or other teleportation towers locked. In general, I think this one comes with a nice vibe, a good climate, which is nice to settle down in the new scenario. Now you're going to have to make some important decisions if you're a returning player, as you can transfer items from your seasonal backpack into this scenario. To make progression as efficient as possible and get the most out of your early days on the new server, I recommend you to take a drill and chainsaw with you. This is going to make farming resources easy mode in the beginning, which you're going to need plenty of to settle down. I also recommend you to take some deviants with you. The logging beaver and digby boy are the essentials to automatically farm lumber and ores. The mushrooms can be used to farm inside your base. Focus on those with the highest values. Activity and skill ratings of five are top tier, while of course you also want to bring those precious shinies. Unfortunately, due to a bug, I wasn't able to transfer any of the shinies I farmed, so make sure to bring those as well if you want to have them for this scenario. Also, transfer 10 of each seed you have in your backpack, which barely costs any of that transfer currency, 
But essentially, the tools are going to be most interesting, but also take a calibration blueprint. I have the rapid shot style right here, which makes my sniper build much better. So if you bring like one or two of these, they're not going to cost much of this accuracy, while the weapons and armor themselves are extremely expensive. Wow, did you see that Buffalo 360 after the death? That was interesting. Anyways, important information. Based on the animal you hunt in the new scenario, you also get different heights. As you can see right here, we've got some deer heights, we've got some cow heights and reindeer heights. These come with different bonuses to weather resistance, like cold or hot resist, to make survival in this harsh environment a little bit easier. In the top right of the screen, you can now see a thermometer. If we open up our inventory, this is where you can see your temperature or state. It's cozy, which means we are in the clear, while if we get cold or hot, we will start getting sickness based on these weather conditions. So it's very important you always focus on getting this to the optimal level. In other words, cozy. What I really like about this quick travel is that it's central in the world. You can reach a whole lot of different things in no time. We've got some cars nearby which respawn new fuel every X amount of hours. So you can constantly grab that if you're running low on it. And we're also right next to the water, which we can pump with our water systems. We've got a whole lot of different resources in the area, including plants, trees and whatnot. So we can place our base right here, which will make the start easy. And if we want to quick travel, we can just run to the teleportation tower. We don't have to use the quick travel to our own base. If you've also decided to place your base right here, by the way, this is where I found a spooky bus, which doesn't seem to move at these exact coordinates, minus 300, 5760. And we have to gather some locks. I mean, look at how fast we collect this right now because the decisions we made with the transfer. Now we can also take aluminum ore and everything, which normally isn't possible with the basic standard tools. You also want to craft a torch ASAP, as this one increases your body temperature, especially in cooler areas. This is interesting. While you can also start crafting gear right now with the heights we've picked up earlier we can craft some new gear with resistances. The cow hide from the buffaloes comes with maximum loads, while reindeer hide, for example, I think we've got a couple of those as well, can be used to increase your cold resist. Other cow hides with heat resist, there's a lot of stuff to choose from right here, while with head armor, for example, you can go with damage reduction. With boots, you can increase roll speed, movement speed, and other type of bonuses, while with the gloves themselves, you can increase your farming efficiency, yield boosts, and gathering speeds. For more temperature control, it's important you also check out the Cradle Mammatics, as right now we've got a couple new ones. For example, Polar Expedition. You can pack your bags and prepare to travel for the snowy realm. These stones, thermoium, helium, and coldium, can be used to increase your resistances. Reminds me a little bit of Don't Starve. First, you're going to have to craft a couple of these thermoium stones. And when you have one of these, you can make yourself, for example, a helium. Increase the cold and frost resist by 10. For the coldium, though, you're going to have to make ice cubes at the fridge and also find cold crystal ores, which we're going to cover in another video. Rare ores usually you come across in the end game. Anyways, the heat team is going to be amazing already to maximize your resistances. This one will be in your backpack by default and will expire after an hour. So make sure you always have one with you to prevent becoming a victim of the harsh weather. Polar Expansion 2, you can even craft a Chaosium Lantern, which also increases those resistances. While in the Building tab, this is where you can pick up Temperature Control. Unlock the Campfire Formula, then also the Simple Vintage Stove. These require some fuel before they can be turned on, but these upgrades are essential if you want to maximize your survival capabilities. You also want to rush the logistics tab, stoves, dishes one, air drying, and then dishes two, as this is where you can pick up some new snacks. The ice melon with increased heat resist, 10. We also have 10 cold resist with the salty roasted spike mayo. And all the way to the bottom, this is where you'll be able to find the all weather stew with the maximum resistances for both. After you've placed that sweet stove, check it out. We can make ourselves some nice salty roast spike meadows and ice melons. For that, we're going to first have to hunt ice melons. 
I was able to spot one of these nodes very close to the bear's den, which you gain access to after a little bit of progression. Level 10, which can be found, well, right here. You're gonna need molotovs to destroy them, while this is also where you can start finding mint and also the ice melons, which you're gonna need for that nice ice melon drink. After a couple of quests, we also gain access to the first commissions. The feeding deviants, hunting animals and gathering ores are all going to be easy to do in the beginning while maintaining your body temperature in the optimal range for over 10 minutes is going to be super easy to complete as well with the tips provided earlier. We're also going to pick up this one. With some credits you can do a couple refreshes. To get to one where you have to take five photographs also super easy to complete but let's go with the disassemble because well we're running kind of low on energy links right here. A nice way to make a decent amount of credits from the get-go is if you sell these canned lunch meat instead of eating them for 200 each. It's not going to make you rich by any means, but still can help you to reset those commissions and get some which can be completed very easily. Oh, and as returning player, don't forget to re-equip all your mods and weapon accessories. This is going to give you an insane stat boost from the get-go when you just joined the server. As you can see right here, I am making short work of enemies way above my level, only just reached level 4 against almost level 20s. And this is where we didn't even have our powerful gear equipped, which you can start crafting after you've placed down that workbench, instantly gain access to all the blueprints you've unlocked in previous seasons with of course their corresponding upgrade level. Wow, with these upgrades, <laughs> everything is going to be easy mode. What's really nice, by the way, with the new update is that you can easily choose the vehicle you want when you decide to place it down. You no longer have to go to your base and assign a different one. I'm very happy they decided to finally add this small yet big quality of life feature. We're gonna need some glass for the wish machine, but let's slab it down and check out all the new blueprints you can unlock with this scenario. If we make a wish, as usual, you can gamble for blueprints and their fragments in this menu. We first have the Echoes of the Rift where you can usually get randoms, so I wouldn't really recommend rolling for these unless you have a ton of access star crumb. A little bit later, we also gain access to the Destructive Flames. This is where you can pick up the new Pyroclasm Starter Shotgun Blueprint. I think a really nice one to focus on. Flaming Rune will give you the Flame Boots. So both of these items, very nice for flame builds. With a Tranquil Frost, you will gain ultimate rewards as well. The Silent Anubis Assault Rifle with Frost Vortex bonuses, as well as the Icy Rain SMG. Then we also have Frost Domain with the Snow Camo Gloves and Blueprint Fragments for that. But yeah, if you just visit the blueprint shop, you can instantly pick them up right here. The shotgun, the pyroclasm starter. For the rifles, we have the silent anubis right here. There's another rifle to be found, probably in the mystical crates, but we also get our hands on a new LMG, the conflicting memories. I'm not a huge fan of LMGs, as you can see, or shrapnel builds in general. I am definitely interested in checking it out one time, but first I want to try a build with the Silent Anabis. Oh, wait, it's actually called Anabasis? Maybe this is a typo, I'm not sure, but um, I honestly thought it was different. But then we also have new status blueprints, the Fire Rune Boots, and also the Snow Camo Gloves. While we also have a new set called the Blackstone set. This one also very interesting with different parts you can unlock. I'm very hesitant on what to pick up first, honestly, as I haven't saved a lot of Star Crumb, but the Fire Room Boots, the Snow Camo Gloves, and those weapons, especially the rifle, are probably gonna be the first ones I'm gonna try out for pretty unique new build potential, let's say. Let's quickly check out the phases of this scenario. We've got five phases in total and every phase lasts for a week. I only just entered this new server. So every seven days, we're gonna have another one. The first week, we only have access to standard events, crisis and silos of normal difficulty. After seven days, that's gonna be the hard mode unlocked for you. And we also have a ton of star crumb as optional rewards. Third week, Dungeons on Pro difficulty, fourth week, there's going to be even more of that. So be sure to always pick up the Star Crumb rewards right here. Something people 
miss a lot actually and these are the phase rewards so we can always pick up a mimetic cleanser at the very beginning of each phase you want to make sure you do that every single time but yeah a lot of new quests are introduced with this new scenario which are going to make it interesting to make progression for those mitsuko marks all right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Everything you need to know from day one to make your adventures survival on the new scenario a whole lot easier. If you enjoyed the content, it would be amazing if you could spare one second of your time, hit that like button, and also share your thoughts about the new scenario in the comments down below. If you have more tips and tricks for the community, for both new and returning players, share them in the comments as well. And yeah, yesterday I talked about the new Black Sector Stronghold, only accessible after a couple of weeks. Make sure to check it out in the top right of the screen, as well as the silo videos from the preview build. Right now, though, it's 4 a.m. out. I want to wish you an amazing day. I'll check you in the next video or live stream. Peace.